Hey everybody, this is Nate Dancer with Pure Life Ministries. You're about to listen to one of the segments from our bi-weekly podcast, Purity for Life. We take you where real life meets real Christianity as we tackle the tough issues for those struggling with sexual sin. We hope you enjoy. My husband is changing, but I'm having trouble trusting him. That's the topic on the table for today's Ask the Counselor question, and to help me talk through this, I've asked Carol Bork to join me. Carol is a counselor for the Overcomers at Home program here at Pure Life Ministries. Carol, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me, Nate. All right, Carol, today's question comes in from a wife who says that her husband has had a porn addiction in the past. He's gotten a lot of help from our ministry so far, and he is changing. She says he's honest with her about his struggles, but she still worries, and she's having trouble trusting him. You know, Carol, I'll bet this is a really common situation for wives whose husbands are starting to walk out real repentance. And um, what would you say to a woman in this situation? Well, based on what she's sharing with me, it sounds like her husband is sincere about coming out of his sin. She talks about seeing some changes, so there's fruit coming out of his life, which is a good sign. So for her, the issue would be to help her with this worry, to keep her mind and her focus on the Lord. That will be very helpful for her in her struggle with worry. All right, Carol, before we move on, I want to park here on something you said. You mentioned sincerity. How is observing sincerity in her husband going to play into her ability to trust her husband? Okay, that's a good question. It is much easier when a wife is seeing that her husband is sincere. His willingness to get help okay. um, and want change plays a huge part, I believe, in reestablishing the trust that was broken. Okay. The fact that he's being honest with her about his struggles. And so those are all extremely helpful in building, rebuilding that trust. Okay. What other counsel would you give her? The other advice I would tell her would be to get her focus off of her husband and onto the Lord, especially as she's seeing some changes in her husband to just, again, focus on who God is, that he is a God who is able to change her husband and to keep her husband. All right, Carol, you just said something that I think a lot of people would object to. You said that a wife should get her eyes off of the sexual sin and onto the Lord. That almost makes the sexual sin sound like it's an insignificant issue. I thought sexual sin was the issue. Yeah, well, I used to think the sexual sin issue was the big issue. And um, I also came into the Overcomers at Home program, and as I started going through Overcomers at Home, I realized that the big issue was a heart issue because Jesus tells us that out of the heart come evil thoughts, fornications, adulteries, murders. And he also says to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So when the heart is right and when the husband begins to pursue the Lord in a right relationship with him, Again, when there's repentance taking place, when there's daily spending time in the Word of God, when he's in prayer with the Lord, the Lord replaces those old desires and those old sinful pursuits with new desires. And there's a love relationship that begins with Jesus, and we're satisfied in him, and we're not looking to be satisfied in the sinful practices that we were before. Right. Okay, and this is really great because what you've done so far, it seems like, is you've given the wife enough evidence to sort of change her mindset about this issue, but I know that really that's only half the battle. Now she has to begin to work out that mindset change. So what would you say some practical things are that she could do when she actually starts to worry about her husband's actions? In my own life, I'll say this, I had a lot of trouble in my thinking my Mm -hmm. mind would just wander. And when my mind would begin to wander, I would have to make a choice at that point to take it and meditate on the Word of God. Okay. And one practical way of doing that for me was to take three by five cards. And when my thinking would just start wandering or I'd start worrying or fretting or getting anxious, I would choose at that point to take out my three by five card that I had my scripture written on and begin to meditate on that and begin to just 
get that into my thinking. Okay, what else can she do? Well, it's a great opportunity for her to pray in faith for her husband. That's another th practical thing she can do, um, believing God to keep her husband. The Apostle Paul mentions in Philippians that he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. So she can trust the Lord's word and hold faith for her husband that God began something good in him and he's going to finish that work. Hmm. As long as her husband stays on the path and he continues to turn to the Lord and do the right thing, she sees her husband fighting the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. She can trust God to complete it. And as she begins to dwell on God and on his promises, she will begin to experience a peace that surpasses all understanding. Carol Bork, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me, Nate. Thanks for listening to this segment from Purity for Life. If you want to hear the full show, go to purelifeministries.org slash podcast or check us out in the iTunes store. <laughs>